to the Gospel of St. Matthew, chapter number two, beginning with verse number one. After Jesus was born in Bethlehem, in Judea, during the time of King Herod, Magi from the east came to Jerusalem and asked, where is the one who had been born king of the Jews? We saw his star when it rose and have come to worship him. The word of the Lord is blessed. For a few moments, on today, I want to encourage you from the subject, finding Jesus along the way. Come on. Finding Jesus along the way. And for a thing, I want you to remember, we need to possess an authentic desire to seek out Jesus. Amen. Amen. We must have an authentic desire to seek out Jesus regardless of our circumstances. Amen. As the excitement builds up for Christmas morning. And as we eagerly anticipate a joyous celebration, the exchanging of gifts, the delicious meals and sweet treats, and as we eagerly look forward to the cherished moments of togetherness with our families on Christmas Day, it is important for us to remember in the midst of the traditional elements and formalities of Christmas that Jesus remains the true reason for the season. As we look forward to joyfully enjoying the company of our friends and our families, and Reverend Slater, as we listen to the temptations rendition of Silent Night, mm -hmm. let us never forget that Jesus and Jesus alone is the reason for the season. In the midst of the excitement and the entertainment, it is necessary that we keep Jesus Christ as our focus because he is the very heart and the true reason behind who we are and what we do despite the external influences that often dominate our attention during this time of year let us recognize that Jesus is always at the heart of the Christmas story. Jesus, my brothers and my sisters, embodies hope, love, and he makes this time of year significant. Additionally, my brothers and my sisters, it is critical for us to recognize that no matter where we've been, and no matter what we have encountered, God is aware of it all. And he has always been by our side, no matter what. I want you to understand that every element of a Christmas story should remind us that we serve an all-knowing God. 
Who is the ultimate authority? Amen. Over everything. Amen. So as we apprehend and perceive, we must understand that Christmas, God is at the center of the story. No matter what things look like in our lives, if we are experiencing times of loneliness or times of despair this time of year, God is still at the center of the story. We may have struggles. We may deal with problematic people. Our bodies may be failing us. But we must realize that God is still at the center of the story. We will be tired. Think of woods, we're going to get frustrated. We will be burdened, but we can throw our hands up and worship because God is still at the center of the story. Yes, he is. Yes, he is. Philip Brooks writes so eloquently For Christ is born of Mary and gathered all above while mortals sleep and angels keep. Their watch of wondering love. O morning stars together proclaim the holy birth and pray the same to God the King and peace to men on earth. My brothers and my sisters, we acknowledge on today that as human beings, we've all fallen short of God's glory. However, Reverend Slater, in the midst of our shortcomings, it is essential for us to continually pursue holiness and to strive for a deeper relationship with God. If this time of year doesn't remind us of anything, we must continue to pursue the holiness of God. And the righteousness of God while we strive to grow our relationship with the King. To so understand, as we give gifts, Jesus is the one true gift. And as we grow in our connection and relationship with Him, because we do understand that we must be connected. I am the Bible. Yeah. If you want the branches, yes. apart from me, you can do nothing. So it's not about the gifts. It's about being connected. It's not about the food. It's being connected. It's not about Frosty. It's not about Rudolph. It's about being connected to the true and living God. The song already says, I can hear my Savior calling. I'll go with him all the way. I'll go with him through the garden. I'll go with him all the way. I'll go with him through the judgment. I'll go with him all the way. He will give me grace and he will give me glory and he will go with me. He'll go with me all the way in our text. My brothers and my sisters, we encounter the wise men or the magi who made a pilgrimage from the east arriving in Jerusalem was a crucial question. Where is the newborn right, right. king of the Jews? It's important for us to understand that this event takes place several months after Jesus' birth. Yeah. Yeah. Dina says, how do I know that? Because see, the family, according to chapter 2, verse 11, 
has already found a residence. They're all, they're already living in a house. And they are no, and Jesus is no longer in a stable. Right. Right. Amen, Pastor. Considering the timeline, we come to the conclusion that Jesus has already undergone circumcision. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. And Mary has completed the purification period. The fact that she offered a pair of turtle doves or two young pigeons instead of a lamb indicates that the family of Jesus was poor. Preach it with me, Red. These magic or wise men from the east came to see the king of the Jews. And because they knew about the king of the Jews, we know that they have been influenced by Judaism. Are y'all with me? Yes. Or they either or they even been influenced by some of the writings of Daniel. Let's go back. Uh oh, Daniel? As we look at the story, according to the book of Daniel, the Magi held a prominent position in Babylon. Daniel himself was appointed ruler over the entire providence, and he was the chief prefect over the Magi. He was over them because of his wisdom, ability by God's grace to interpret dreams. His favor among the Magi group when he saved their lives. So because of that, it is important to understand that it was Daniel's haters that threw him in the dark lion's den. That's right, that's right. Come on. That's right. It was not the Magi. Considering Daniel's esteemed position and his influence among the Magi, it is reasonable to believe that they learned much from him. Amen. And they even learned about the true God of Israel and his plans. Let me give you a historical fact. The Magi before Daniel were monotheistic. That means that they already believed in one God. And they also bathed themselves in astrology. Are y'all with me? So Daniel could have poured in them information from God, even information including the coming of the king. Additionally, we have to look at this fact too. Think of the sense of after the exile, some Jews stayed in Babylon and they intermarried with the people of the, from the east which could have contributed to the continuation of the messianic beliefs in that region. Are y'all with me? But see, as we observe this text, we have to grasp the fact that this particular set of magi are possibly different from the set under Daniel. But they came, what we know is that they came from the east and they were God-fearing Gentiles. Amen. And they lived during the time of Christ. And understand this. When the Magi, Brother Wood, entered the city, and let us be clear, we don't know how many Magi there were. Amen. Come on. They begin to ask the question. And see, them asking the question is key. Where 
is the newborn king of the Jews. This lets us know, Deacon Woods, that they went around the city Amen. seeking Jesus. They probably assumed since they were Gentiles and they knew about this monumental birth that everyone in the city knew about this monumental birth. But to their surprise, nobody knew about the birth. <laughs> Todd, they went to where Jesus was and nobody knew about Jesus. Isn't that a shame of we? I like that. This is the place where Jesus is. Isn't it a pity when folk come into the house of the Lord that people who should know where Jesus is don't know where to find him? Well, for clarity, let it be known that we don't know how God revealed to the Magi that the king of the Jews had been born. We only know by the page of scripture that he gave them a sign. We are told it was a star in the east. But let it be known also, we don't know the identity of the star. Just like we don't really know the identity of the men who saw it. It is clear that the Magi were not following the star because they had to inquire where Jesus was born. So some of these TV shows misguide you. They saw the star in the east, but there is no evidence that it continued to shine or led them to Jerusalem. Where my Bible reader said, it was not until they were told about the prophesied birthplace of the Messiah that the star reappeared. Okay. Prophecy. Prophecy. Okay. Are y'all with me? Yes. It reappeared. And it guided them not only to Bethlehem, Joe, but it guided them to exactly where Jesus was. Amen. Agree. Am I in the book? Right. My brothers and my sisters, these travelers from the east came with a twofold purpose. First, they came to find the king of the Jews. And they came to worship Amen. the king of the Jews. Amen. When we come to church, we should come looking to find Amen. the king of the Jews. Uh-huh. And to worship yes. the king of the Jews. Yes. If we're sick and down and out, our goal is to find the king of the Jews yes. and to worship the king of the Jews. Yes. If we talk about, about or if we dislike, it's still our goal to find the king of the Jews and to worship the king of the Jews. I don't care if everybody calls you everything but a child of G-O-D. Our goal is to find the king of the Jews Amen. and to worship the king of the Jews. This lets us know in all things, Jelani, that they were true seekers of God. And see, we have to understand that in spite of their imperfections and falling short on a daily basis, they recognized God's voice when he spoke. Are y'all with me? Even with limited spiritual light, they recognized 
God's light. Mm -hmm. When he revealed himself to them. And this is important to understand that they had a genuine seeker's heart. And we must have a genuine seeker's heart. Yes, yes. And according to Jeremiah, if we have a seeker's heart, we are promised when we seek, we will find. Amen. 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 Let us remember the following. The Magi came with the purpose. When we come to the house of prayer, we should come with a purpose. And their purpose wasn't to coordinate and strategize. They came to seek Jesus. Yeah. Amen. And we know that they were successful by the aid of the Holy Spirit in finding Jesus. And when they found Jesus, they worshiped him. So our goal is to come to find and to worship. I'm going to say it one more time for my note takers. Just like the Magi, our goal is to come to find and to worship. See, these are important points for us to highlight on this journey by the Magi. They actively sought Jesus. My brothers and my sisters, we need to actively seek Jesus. And we need to seek Jesus. Tell your neighbor about any means necessary. But not only did they seek Jesus, Ray, they located Jesus. It is our mandate to use those Holy Ghost empowered GPS systems so we can get to the place where Jesus is. Somebody right now needs to get to the place where Jesus is. Somebody is depending on you to help them get to the place where Jesus is. So they sought him. They located him. And then they did something extraordinary. They displayed their devotion by worshiping him. It is our mandate to express our devotion to Jesus not by just showing up, not by just serving the church, but we show up to worship him, Sister Regina, in spirit and in truth. So with all I said, when we genuinely desire to find Jesus, what happens along the way? Number one, even though daily we fall short of God's glory, Amen. by the aid of the Holy Spirit, we grow to a place where we recognize God's voice more and more daily. Understand, we all have flaws. Amen? Amen. We all have yes. limitations. Yes. But with God's means, in spite of our flaws, mm -hmm. and in spite of our limitations, we need to discern his voice and we respond with determination, not procrastination. Just like the Magi, we must be willing to step out of our comfort zones and follow the leading of God. And we follow regardless of our past mistakes and our current shortcomings. Point number one, we grow to a place 
Will we recognize God's voice more and more? Amen. Point number two. Even though we are limited, in the midst of the darkness of life, by faith, we embrace the light. See, our spiritual understanding of God is limited. But by the guidance of the Holy Spirit, we can recognize God's light in the midst of our own darkness and in the midst of the darkness of the world. As we move forward, it's critical that we keep the faith. Never cease to pray. Walk up right, call a new day and night. He'll be there. But we keep the faith. And we purposefully seek him. Allowing his light to illuminate our pathway. Point number two. In the midst of the darkness of life, we embrace God's light. But this is the one I like. Point number three. We understand we all fall short. Amen. And we all have limitations. But we have the promise. Tell your neighbor, we got the promise. That in spite of our inadequacies, when we search for him, we will find him. Amen. Amen. Jeremiah 29 Verse 13 assures us as we come to Christ with genuine hearts, seeking him with the intent to worship him, we will never fail to find him. HMBC, this promise, it gives us hope. It, and it encourages us to continue our journey with trust. Amen. Knowing that our earnest pursuits of Jesus will lead us to an encounter with Jesus. So, we, so as we go and as we grow, yeah. we recognize God's voice more clearly. In the midst of the darkness of life, we embrace God's light. And in spite of our shortcomings, when we search for him, we will find him. Yes. See, the songwriter says, with our voice lifted up high and praises that reach the sky, Jesus, you're the reason why there's no Christmas without you. As we seek to go in his name and as we seek to grow in trees of righteousness. Jesus, you're the reason why. And there is no Christmas without you. As we allow the Holy Spirit to illuminate our minds and influence our behavior. Jesus, you're the reason why. And there's no Christmas without you. As we seek to find him, and worship him. We must declare. Jesus. You're the reason why. Yeah. And there's no Christmas. Without you. In our pursuit of righteousness. We grow. In his name. Yes, we do. In our pursuit. Of righteousness. We go forth. In his name. Oh, yes, yes. In our pursuit of righteousness. We suffer in his name. Yes, yes. In our pursuit of righteousness, we encounter his transformative power. Yes. In our pursuit of righteousness, we surrender to the guidance of the Holy Spirit. In our pursuit of righteousness, finding him becomes an act of devotion. Yes. See, the songwriter says, uh -huh. souls in danger, look above. Jesus completely saves. He will lift you by his 
flood out of the angry waves but the master of the sea billows his will obey he your savior wants you to be to be saved today so as we prepare our hearts to spread Christmas cheer remember Jesus will lift us up by his love as we prepare to fellowship with one another, I want you to remember that Jesus lifts us up by his love. No matter what you're going through on today, no matter what folks say about you, Jesus will lift us up by his love. If you're not feeling the joy of the holiday season, I want you to think on the fact that Jesus lifts us up by his love. Some of us may be fractured. Some of us may be damaged. Some of us may feel deserted. Some of us feel like our joy is not overflowing, but Jesus lifts us up by his love. Unto us, a child is born. Unto us, a son is given. And the government shall be upon his shoulder and his name shall be wonderful counselor the mighty God the everlasting father the prince of peace as we prepare for the benediction we know Jesus is the reason for the season as we seek to go and serve Jesus is the reason for the season as we witness in the land of the shadow of death Jesus is still the reason for the season as we go forth preaching the gospel and teaching the truth about our God Jesus is the reason for the season as we serve as agents of healing in a destitute land Jesus is the reason for the season to walk in the light beautiful light come where the dew drops of mercy shine bright shine around us by day and by night somebody say Jesus Jesus, 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 the light of the world. As we prepare to go forth, don't forget about Jesus. As we strive for the greater in God, don't forget about Jesus. Remember this season is about Him, it's not about us. Forget about Jesus as we strive to be beacons of light in a dark and dark world. So forget about Jesus. Just ask the Savior to help you, to comfort, to strengthen, and to keep you. He is willing, he's willing to aid you. He for carry you through and don't forget about Jesus as we dance in the Christmas festivities and as we open those precious gifts don't forget about Jesus when we find Jesus and we remember Jesus don't keep Jesus to yourself so tell somebody else about our King there's somebody that needs to hear about the Bethlehem experience. Tell somebody about Jesus. Somebody is sick. And there's somebody out there who can't get well. Tell somebody about Jesus. There's somebody that needs a savior. My brothers and my sisters. Tell somebody else about our king I want you to remember the sleeping may into a life tell somebody 
about Jesus. The song might have said, Blessed quietness, holy quietness, but assurance in my soul of the stormy sea. See, Jesus speaks to me. How the villain seeks to grow. So no matter what you're going through, you find Jesus along the way. If you sick, find Jesus along the way. If you're broke, find Jesus along the way. If you need help with your family, find Jesus along the way. He promised never to leave us. He promised never to forsake us. So my brothers and my sisters, yeah. Yeah. when we genuinely desire to find Jesus, what happens along the way? Number one, as we go and as we grow, we recognize God's voice more clearly. Number two, in the mist mist of our own darkness Mm -hmm. and the darkness of this world, Mm -hmm. we still embrace God's light by the aid of the Holy Spirit. And last but not least, Jeremiah 29 verse 13. It assures us that as we come to Christ with genuine hearts seeking him with the intent to worship him we will never fail to find him so they came they found and they worshipped Jesus is the reason for the season there's no Christmas without Christ. There's no Christmas without Him. And we must remember as we share gifts and receive gifts that Jesus is the one true gift. Amen. Thank God for the journey. Thank God for the journey. And thank God for finding Jesus. Let's give God some praise up in here, up in here.